Sometimes when the template and the component class interact, we might want to execute a few additional lines of code. For example, let's say we have an input element. We need to constantly keep track of the value of this input element so that the value can be submitted to the server when required. For that purpose, we use two-way binding. But whenever the input value changes, in addition to storing the updated value, I also want to execute few lines of code. However, that is not possible with the banana in a box two-way binding syntax. If you take a look at this example from the previous video, we know that when the user enters a value, the model gets updated. And that is pretty much it. The syntax ensures the model and the view are always in sync, but nothing more than that. To be able to execute some custom logic or a method, for example, we need to split the two-way binding syntax into separate property binding and event binding. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to go back to VS Code and in the component class, I'm going to create a new property called username, which is of type string. In the HTML, I'm going to add a new input element and bind it to the username property, just like how we have done it for the name property. So let me copy this paste it and change name to username. Now, if you take a look at the browser, you should see two-way binding working as expected. Now, what I would also like is whenever the username is Vishwas, an alert message should pop up displaying the message, welcome back Vishwas. To achieve that, we need to split the two-way binding syntax. The banana in a box syntax is nothing but a combination of property binding and event binding. So the splitting can happen in two steps. The first step, create a property binding with the ng-model directive and the username property. So just the square brackets. Second step, add event handling with the ng-model change event. So event binding, so parentheses, ng model change and to this we assign username is equal to dollar event here dollar event refers to the updated value of the input element we assign that back to the username property thus achieving two-way binding now if you go back to the browser you can see that two-way binding still works as expected but by splitting the syntax, we now have the ability to execute additional lines of code. Let me show you how. Back here in VS Code, in the template, instead of assigning the updated value, I can specify a method name. So let's call a method greet Vishwas and pass in the updated value as an argument, so dollar $event. Now in the component class, let's define the greet Vishwas method. The method takes care of maintaining the updated username value, just like the two-way binding syntax. But what is great now is that I can write as many lines of code as I want to, which will be executed when the value changes. For my simple example, I want an alert to pop up if the username is Vishwas. So within the greet Vishwas method, if updated value is equal to Vishwas, alert, welcome back Vishwas. Now, if I go back to the browser, as I start typing out my name, you can see that the model and the view are still in sync. And when I complete my name, I get an alert message. Welcome back, Vishwas. Now, I know this is kind of a beginner level example, but that is definitely intentional. I want to show what can be done and leave it up to you all to decide how to use it in the project you are working on. 
So throughout the course, you're going to see very simple examples. But how and when you use the concept supporting that example is what I would like you guys to take away from this tutorial series. All right then, in this video, we learned that we can split two-way binding syntax and execute code when the template and class are interacting with each other. As an alternative to splitting the syntax, we can also use getters and setters. Let's take a look at that in the next video.